I miss going to the pub and seeing my friends. That's what I miss, actually. Some of it you can do. So a huge part of it has been speaking to people who, uh, whose businesses have been destroyed, who um, are signing on to Universal Credit for the first time, working with people through that. And, and, and all of that stuff you can do online, right? Like you can do that remotely. You don't need to see people to do that. But working with government and getting stuff done with government is really hard when you're not there. I happen to know the Chancellor and his team, and so I managed to get some stuff done with them. But there are other cabinet ministers that I don't really know, and that means that they're things that I've wanted to do that I've just ended up having to send a letter. Also, it's tricky being able to show people you're doing stuff. Parts of it are very easy to do. Other parts are harder to do, I think. There's always a future for it, but I think that everybody prefers it face to face. And I think that what might be a lasting change is in parliamentary recesses. Before, you basically couldn't reach any government department. It's impossible. Now, I think you just go, okay, we'll do a Zoom call with the relevant people. I just think that you're used to that now. But I do think that that will be a lasting consequence, is that it's more meetings within Parliament and within government will happen all year round much more. I am quite open-minded to this, right? So, you know, it is always going to be important to know how to count. It's always going to be important to know how to read. Foreign languages are important. You know, understanding basics of physics and chemistry and biology are important. Like, we know those things are always important. Um, but what we need to be thinking much more of in this country is how do you teach kids for not just jobs that don't exist. People focus on jobs, and I think that's quite narrow, actually. It's just a world that is different. We've got six, seven, eight-year-olds who, in this country, we, we force into formal education quite young compared to most countries. So do we need to think about adapting that and thinking, are there things we can build into that at an earlier age to build their communication skills, how they build relationships? Because those are the skills that make a real difference to make sure they're bedded in the older you are. Saying, we do need to look at other countries and think, well, maybe they, they've got something right and we can adapt, you know, what, what we do. P part of school is obviously learning those basics we talked about, you know, it's maths, it's English, it's basics of science and all the rest of it. And that's critical and that always has to be the absolute first function of any school and any education system. But at the same time, Art, sport, drama, those things are so important because if your child has confidence, even if it's confidence in art or drama, that carries through into how they are as a human being, helps them deal with other things they find less good, they're less good at. So I frankly think all of those things really need to be boosted. I really think that those things are really important. And I say this because I loved drama and art and sport. I did all of those things when I was younger. And why should, you know, I have the opportunity to do, to do those things. I think every kid should have the opportunity to do those things. My sense is that we do need to make sure we prize the science, maths and technology, especially for young girls. And I don't just mean at school, because I, I think the schools do quite a good job at encouraging. I mean, when they look on telly or when they look at a tech company, you think, oh, all the tech people, who are they? They're all blokes, right? They are. We need to change the image of it, because by changing the image of it, you get more and more people doing it. So how do we do that? I think we need to, um, I, just, I strongly advocate people carrying on maths and, a, and at least a science at A level. Uh, I think that's really important. I think the international baccalaureate should be looked at by more schools because it means that you have to do a foreign language 
uh, you have to do maths at a later stage. Those things I think are really, really important. And we need to quite actively work with the tech industry to broaden the people who are in it. Uh, so I think we do need to do all those things. On the funding, uh, I've got, I've actually put a question into the transport department and I don't know how they're allocating it. Normally how these things work is that it works at county council level. So that two billion effectively gets divided at county council level and then it comes down through there. And I'll be speaking to David Williams, who's a Harfenden councillor, who is the leader of Hertfordshire County Council about that. Uh, in relation to Harfenden, I would question the idea that in Harpenden we couldn't do this. There is quite a lot of space in quite a lot of our pavements around the main thoroughfares in Harpenden. Uh, and I think a large part of Harpenden with a bit of imagination, we could create cycle lanes. Uh, the town council I know have their 2.6 million pound fund that they got through sale of an asset a couple of years ago and they've, they've got that and they're looking at ways to spend that. And I know not just me, lots of people have put in um, sustainable transport ideas to them. Uh, and I know they're looking at them. I know in Harpenden we can do these things. Uh, I'm thinking about this right now. I think this is probably the most difficult challenge that, that I and a town like Harpenden has. We are not going to have the, we're not going to be able to manage the same level of, of uh, commuter traffic on Trent. I, I, I don't have an answer now about how this is going to work. What I hope is that it happens gradually. And as it gradually happens, the number of services gradually increases so that actually we develop the capacity organically as time goes on. But it is a really, really big challenge. And I've spoken to the Transport Secretary about this in particular. I mean, his seat, his constituency is well in Hatfield. He's next door. He understands the problem. I think we should also look at things like car sharing and I think encouraging some way of, of advertising that and managing car sharing I think could have a real benefit uh, to, um, to people getting in and out. Uh, but I think it's a real challenge. I, I, don't, I don't have an answer, um, but hopefully as time goes on, as people gradually get back to work, we'll figure it out as we go along. I think that we've got to disentangle the environment and climate change. So what I think is going to definitely happen is that Luton Airport, uh, people are really going to notice even more than they did already the planes, for example. And people are going to notice, people aren't going to want to breathe dirty air again. They're going to want to breathe clean air. On the climate change, uh, now look, it's a big priority of mine. I think the jury is out, because I think it's all about how countries respond economically as we recover. I hope we take the path that is, we have to do a recovery, it has to be a green recovery, and we need to think about if we're reshaping our economies, you know, let's just go for broke on the, on the green energy. Let's make sure we move away from gas boilers and have hybrid boilers and hydrogen boilers and electric boilers. Let's. Let's, let's do those things right now. We need to generate wealth, growth in our economies, et cetera. And I think that's the course that Britain will take and much of Europe will take. I'm not sure about Brazil. You know, I'm not sure about the US. I'm not necessarily sure about China. So in that sense, I think it'll be a bit mixed. Bacon sandwich or smashed avocado on toast? Oh, bacon sandwich, please. Elephant or tiger? Tiger. Tennis or golf? Tennis. Swimming with wild dolphins or wingsuiting through mountains? What's wingsuiting? <laughs> oh, it's, <laughs> it's the one where you're in like a bodysuit with wings and you're, you're literally, you jump off the mountain and fly. Oh, I'd be far too scared to do that. Swimming. Yeah, me too. I would no way. Spiders or mice? Do I prefer, ooh, spiders? Joe Wicks or Steve Backshall? Joe Wicks. No electricity or no hot water? 
Mm. I think I'd go no, uh, I'd rather no hot water than no electricity. <laughs> Oscars or the Brits? Oscars. Snow or sun? Sun. Gin or rum? Gin. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank Brilliant. you so much. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you.